Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dabal Mehta. And today we are going to discuss how to run MANCOVA in SPSS. MANCOVA stands for Multivariate Analysis of Covariance. It is an extension of MANOVA, that is Multivariate Analysis of Variance. That includes one or more covariates. Covariates are continuous variables that are not of primary interest, but are included in the analysis to control for the potential confounding effects. By incorporating co covariates, MANCOVA can produce, can provide a more accurate assessment of the primary relationships of interest. Some basic requirement for MANCOVA. It requires one independent variable on the scale of nominal or ordinal that is discrete, two dependent variable on the scale of interval or ratio that is continuous, one covariate on the scale of interval or ratio that is continuous. Before we proceed further, let's understand the family of ANOVA. We start with the basic ANOVA. The basic ANOVA requires one dependent variable, one independent variable and zero covariate. So here the independent variable discrete, it's discrete, which is level of education. And the dependent variable is test score. The objective is to study the effect of level of education on test score. Basic ANOVA. ANCOVA. One dependent variable, one independent variable, and one covariate. So the independent vari variable remains same, dependent variable remains same, but we have introduced one more term that is covariate. Basically, the covariate is a variable whose effect we want to control on the dependent variable. So here, the term is number of hours spent on study. So we want to kill its effect on test score. So now the objective will be to study the effect of level of education on test score by controlling number of hours spent on study. One way MANOVA, dependent variable is 2, independent variable is 1, covariate is 0. So the independent variable is same, dependent variable test score and another dependent variable which we have introduced is annual income to study the effect of the objective is to study the effect of level of education on test score and annual income. Two-way MANOVA. Two dependent variable, two independent variable and zero covariate. Now the objective is to study the effect of level of education on test score and annual income. The second is to study the effect of gender on test score and annual income. The next is MANCOVA. Two dependent variable, one, two, one independent variable and one covariate. The covariate is the term whose effect we want to control. So now what will be our objective? To study the effect of level of education on test score and annual income by controlling the effect of number of hours spent on study. Real life applications of MANCOVA are medical research, evaluating the effectiveness of different treatments on multiple health outcomes, that is blood pressure, cholesterol levels and heart rate, while controlling for covariates like age and baseline health status. Education. Comparing the effectiveness of different teaching methods on multiple student outcomes, that is test scores, class participation and retention rates, while controlling for the prior knowledge and socioeconomic status. Marketing. Evaluating the impact of different marketing strategies on consumer behavior, example, brand awareness, purchase intention and customer satisfaction while controlling for previous brand exposure and demographic characteristics. Environmental studies, investigating the effects of pollution control measures on various environmental indicators that is air quality, water quality and bio biodiversity while controlling for geometric and uh, while controlling for geographic and climatic factors. Social sciences, studying the effects of social policies, example, minimum wage laws, welfare programs on multiple socioeconomic outcomes that is income, employment and education levels, while controlling for the baseline economic conditions and demographic variables. Sports science, comparing the effectiveness of different training regimes on athletes, performance metrics, the example is speed, strength, endurance while controlling for the baseline fitness levels and demographic variables. 
independence of observation is the first assumption observations within and between groups should be independent of each other this assumption ensures that the data points are not influenced by each other and that each observation provides unique information multivariate normality the dependent variables should follow a multivariate normal distribution within each group this means that for each combination of group and dependent variable the data should be normally distributed linearity the relationships between the dependent variable and the independent variable should be linear manova assumes that the relationship between the independent variable that is the group membership and the dependent variable that is outcome should be linear homogeneity of variance covariance matrices that is homoscedasticity the variance covariance matrices of the dependent variable should be equal across all groups this assumption implies that the spread that is variance and the shape that is covariance of the data distributions should be similar across groups this can be tested using box m test sample size generally there should be more cases in each group than the number of dependent variables a common rule of thumb is that the sample size in each group should be at least larger than the number of dependent variable multicollinearity the independent variable that is a group membership should not be highly correlated with each other high multicollinearity can inflate standard errors and make it difficult to interpret the results accurately now let's take one example in a clinical practice monitoring major vital signs such as systolic blood pressure which is given in third column pulse rate fourth column and oxygen saturation fifth column it is essential for assessing patient patient health and treatment effectiveness the uh, case study investigates the impact of three medications a b and c on this vital signs among the patients controlling for the age we want to remove the effect of age the data set comprises observations from 30 patients with 10 patients randomly assigned to each medicine group 10 10 10 each patient's vital signs were measured after receiving treatment with one of the three medicines let's see the data in SPSS you can see the same data is here so to run to run uh, one way man, uh, mancova we will go in analyze generalized linear model multivariate transfer systolic blood pressure in dependent variable pulse rate in dependent variable oxygen saturation in dependent variables these are on the continuous scale medicine the fixed factor which is in discrete medicine a b and c transfer it here age we want to control the effect of age will be transferred in covariate now click on model and instead of full factorial activate build the terms transfer medicine age now select medicine and age together and press continue and click ok now before we proceed further let's see the hypothesis which we will have to test the first is a multivariate hypothesis its null is there is no significant difference in the combined means of the systolic blood pressure pulse rate and oxygen saturation among the three medicine groups controlling for the baseline measurement that is H. This is multivariate hypothesis. The univariate hypothesis is we start with systolic blood pressure. There is no significant difference in the systolic blood pressure among patients treated with medicine A, B and C after controlling for baseline measurements that is H. Pulse rate. There is no significant difference in pulse rates among the patients treated with medicine A, B and C after controlling for baseline measurement that is H. Oxygen saturation. Null hypothesis is there is no significant difference in oxygen saturation among the patients treated with medicine A, 
B and C after controlling for baseline measurements. Now let's proceed further. So the first thing you have to check is the interaction of medicine and age. Is it significant or not? So here uh, is a multivariate test you can see here and here is a p-value and this is the test of between subjects here also you will find medicine into age now i'll simply copy this into my slide so that i can write the interpretation yeah here is the interpretation medicine with age the p-value as the p-value of the interaction term medicine and age this is more than 0 0.05 all of them are more than 0 0.05 so we can say that the interaction medicine with age is not significant this is desirable why it is desirable because we want to control the effect of age this should not be significant it is better that the p-value is more than 0 0.05 which means it should be non-significant it suggests that the effect of medicines on the dependent variable does not significantly vary by age. In other words, age does not significantly modify the effect of dependent uh, of the effect of different medicines on systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, and oxygen saturation. This indicates that the effectiveness of the medicines on these vitals is consistent. It is not based on age across different age groups. The next is test of between subjects effects. Same interaction term. Uh, here also we will focus on p-value, but this time we will get we will get the p-value individually for the dependent variable: systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, and oxygen saturation. So again we write the interpretation. Again we write the interpretation as the p-value of the interaction term medicine and age is more than 0 0.05 for all the tests. So we can say that the interaction term medicine with age is not significant. It suggests that the effect of medicines on the dependent variable does not significantly vary by age. In other words, age does not significantly modify the effect of different medicines on systolic blood pressure, pulse rate and oxygen saturation. This indicates that the effectiveness of the medicines on these vitals is consistent across different age groups. Now let's proceed further. Now once the effect of covariance are insignificant, we proceed further. Click here, multivariate. Now go in the model. Instead of build terms, make it full factorial. Click continue. In contrast, you don't have to change anything. Continue. Plots. Transfer medicine into the horizontal axis. Add. Continue. Estimated marginal means. Transfer medicine into the display means for. Compare main effects. In this, you are having two. LSD none and Bon Ferroni. LSD none. Uh, basically, LSD stands for least significant difference. So, it is used when we want to find out the significant difference between the pairs. That is, the pairs are medicine A compared with medicine B, medicine B compared with medicine C, medicine A compared with medicine C. Uh, now, when you are sure that there is a possibility of type 1 error in your analysis, you activate bond ferroni Continue. Save nothing to do continue options one that is a descriptive statistics estimates of effect size homogeneity test continue click ok and now you got the result you can see in medicine a 10 patients b 10 patients c 10 patients systolic blood pressure medicine a b c their mean pulse rate a b c their mean oxygen saturation a b c their mean so first we have to test the assumptions. The first one is the equality of the covariance matrices. Right click copy. This I will take it into the slide. Null hypothesis is the covariance matrices of the dependent variables are equal across all groups. See the p-value. 
as the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. This means that we do not find statistically significant difference in the covariance matrices of the dependent variables among different medicines. This is good. This is desirable. So in case of box M statistics, the p-value should be more than 0 0.05 so that we can say that we are having the homogeneity of covariance matrices. Thus, the assumption that the covariance matrices are equal across groups is not violated based on the results of box M test. Now, let's proceed further. There are more results which are generated here. Next thing which we have to check is Levin's test of equality of error variances. Right click, copy and we will do the interpretation now. Null is the error variances of the dependent variable which is systolic blood pressure, pulse rate and oxygen saturation are equal across the different groups uh, different groups of medicine and age. So just see the p-value. Systolic blood pressure p-value less than 0 0.05. Pulse rate p-value more than 0 0.05. Oxygen saturation p-value more than 0 0.05. Now let's write the interpretation for systolic blood pressure. The significance lever for systolic blood pressure is 0 0.003 which is less than 0 0.05. This means we reject null hypothesis indicating that the error variances for the systolic blood pressure are not equal across the groups. This is not desirable. Deliberately, I have entered uh, one such column to make you understand that what is desirable and what is not desirable. So this is not desirable. All the p-values should be more than 0 0.05. The next is pulse rate. The significance level for pulse rate is 0.688 which is greater than 0 0.05. This means we fail to reject null hypothesis indicating that the error variances for the pulse rates are equal across the groups. This is desirable. Oxygen saturation. The significance level for oxygen saturation is 0 0.993, which is greater than 0 0.05. This means we fail to reject null hypothesis indicating that the error variances for the oxygen saturation are equal across all the groups. So this is also desirable. Now let's proceed further. The next table is of multivariate test and the next is test of between subjects effects. So I will copy this on the slide and let's do the interpretation of this. So we'll start with the multivariate test, age and medicine. First, we start for age. P value more than 0 0.05, which is really good. Age does not have any effect on medicine. So as the P value of all the tests for age is more than 0 0.05, we can say that age does not significantly affect the dependent variable. The dependent variables are systolic blood pressure, pulse rate or oxygen saturation. The partial eta square values are very, very low, 0.021. So this suggests that the effect size is very less. So this is desirable in this case that the p-value of age should be more than 0 0.05 as age is covariate. Now let's talk about the medicine. Just see the p-value as the p-value for all the tests for medicine is less than 0 0.05. So which are the tests? Pillai stress, Wilkes Lambda, Hotling stress, Roy's largest root. All of them confirm. Uh, all of them are having p-value less than 0 0.05. So we can say that the type of the medicine administered has a significant effect on the dependent variables indicating that the different medicines impact systolic blood pressure, pulse rate and oxygen saturation differently. The partial eta square values, this one, here is it, suggest a substantial effect size with Roy's largest root indicating the most sub substantial effect. Roy's largest root, partial eta square is maximum. Now, if the difference is there, or rather we can say the effect is there of medicine, then on which dependent variable it is significant? That we will have to see. And for that reason, we go into test of between subjects effects. Age and its effect on systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, oxygen saturation. Just see the p-value of 1, 2.0. 
0.23. As a p-value of systolic blood pressure, pulse rate and oxygen saturation is more than 0.05 each. One that is 0 0.535, 0 0.863, 0 0.857. So we can say that the age does not affect systolic blood pressure, pulse rate and oxygen saturation. Desirable? This is desirable as it is covariate. Next, medicine. As a p-value of systolic blood pressure, see this, less than 0 0.05, pulse rate, less than 0 0.05, and oxygen saturation, more than 0 0.05. So as a p-value of systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, and oxygen saturation is less than 0 0.05. Now I will have to modify a little bit. Oxygen saturation does not have the p-value less than 0 0.05, small change. So let's see the interpretation again. As the p-value of systolic blood pressure and pulse rate, 1 and 2, is less than 0 0.05, so we can say that the medicine affects, the different medicine affects systolic blood pressure and pulse rate. Now, for the oxygen saturation, as the p-value of oxygen saturation is 0.126, which is more than 0 0.05. So we can say that the different medicines does not affect oxygen saturation. Pairwise comparison. This, I will get it from here. Here is it. Pairwise comparison. Systolic blood pressure, pulse rate, oxygen saturation. So we'll start the interpretation. Systolic blood pressure, the mean of systolic blood pressure for those patients which are using medicine A minus mean of the systolic blood pressure for those patients using medicine B. Now the difference is negative, minus 12.5. It means that the mean of the systolic blood pressure of those patients using medicine B will be higher. Moreover, the p-value is less than 0 0.05. It means that the difference is significant. So A compared with B. The difference is minus 12.5, significant. A compared with C, difference is minus 26.6, difference is significant. Now A compared with B and B compared with A, the difference is only of the negative sign and positive sign, otherwise the p-value remains same. So there is no point in comparing the things again and again. So A with B, A with C and B with C. Now let's write the interpretation as the p-value of the pair medicine A and B is less than 0 0.05. So we can say that there is a statistically significant difference. Medicine A results in significantly lower systolic blood pressure compared to medicine B with a mean difference of minus 12.5. Why significantly lower? Because the mean of the medicine B is higher. Next, A with C, which is this figure. As the p-value of the pair, medicine A, with medicine C is less than 0 0.05, this one. So we can say that there is a statistically significant difference. Medicine A results in a significantly lower systolic blood pressure compared to medicine C with a mean difference of minus 26.6. Now, B with C, difference is minus 14.1. As the p-value of the pair, Medicine B with medicine C is less than 0 0.05. So we can say that there is a statistically significant difference. Medicine B results in a significantly lower systolic blood pressure compared to medicine C with a mean difference of minus 14.1. Now we will do the comparison of pulse rate. A with B, p-value less than 0 0.05. A with C. B value less than 0 0.05. B with C. B with C. P value more than 0 0.05. And here is the mean difference. Now let's write the interpretation as the P value of the pair medicine with uh, medicine A and medicine B is less than 0 0.05. So we can say that there is a statistically significant difference. Medicine A results in a significantly lower pulse rate compared to medicine B. Why significantly lower? Because the difference is negative, naturally. Lower minus higher. Lower mean minus higher mean, then only you will get the negative sign. So that's the reason medicine A results in significantly lower pulse rate compared to medicine B.
with a mean difference of minus 3.6. As the p-value of the pair medicine A uh, and medicine C is less than 0 0.05, so we can say that there is a statistically significant difference. Medicine A results in significantly lower pulse rate compared to medicine C with a mean difference of minus 1.9, this one. Now, B with C, the difference is 1.7. This means that the pulse rate of uh, those patients which are using medicine B would be higher. Okay, as the p-value of the pair medicine B and medicine C is more than 0 0.05. So, the p-value is more. It means that we can say that there is no statistically significant difference. Difference is there, but it is not so large or it is not so significant. Medicine B shows a slightly higher pulse rate compared to medicine C with a mean difference of 1.7. Oxygen saturation, see the p-values. All of them are having p-values more than 0 0.05. So what will be our interpretation? As a p-value of all the pairs is more than 0 0.05. So there is no statistically significant difference in oxygen saturation according to the medicines. Now we can get this plot, the plot of estimated marginal means and we, we can get the descriptive statistics. So this table, you can get it from here. It will be generated first, here is it. And the plot will be generated at the last, at the fag end. So here is it. This is for systolic blood pressure, pulse rate and oxygen saturation. Let's write the interpretation. Medicine A, B and C, their means of systolic blood pressure. Medicine C resulted in the highest systolic blood pressure, mean 141.90, followed by medicine B, 127.80 and medicine A, 115.30. The difference in systolic blood pressure among the medicines are statistically significant. This we had seen earlier also indicating that medicine C significantly increases blood pressure compared to medicine A and B. Next is the pulse rate, their mean, the plot. So medicine B resulted in the highest pulse rate followed by medicine C and medicine A. The difference in pulse rates among the medicines are statistically significant with medicines B showing the high, showing a significantly higher pulse rates compared to medicine A. Oxygen saturation, you can see the difference is almost insignificant. Both medicines A and C have the same oxygen saturation, which is higher than medicine B. The difference in oxygen saturations were not statistically significant, indicating a similar performance across the medicines. Conclusions. Systolic blood pressure. Medicine significantly influences systolic blood pressure with medicine C generally leading to higher levels compared to medicines A and B. Pulse rates. Medicine also affects pulse rates significantly with medicine B showing the most significant reduction compared to medicine A. Oxygen saturation. There are minor differences in oxygen saturation across medicines with some marginal significance indicating the slight variations. Implications of the research, medicine C may be preferred for patients who need an increase in systolic blood pressure but should be administered cautiously due to the higher associated blood pressure levels. See, I'm not writing here age because age does not have any effect and that's the reason I have not included in conclusion as, as well as implications. So age does not have effect. Medicine B could be suitable for patients needing a higher pulse rates though its impact on systolic blood pressure should be monitored. Medicine A might be ideal for maintaining lower systolic blood pressure and pulse rate with stable oxygen saturation levels. So this was all about Mankova in SPSS. For more videos on advanced data analysis using SPSS, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also follow me on different social medias. Link given in the description box.